Hello everyone. I would like to very quickly talk about why gurus are great beacons and what a guru means in a sense. When we look at what a guru means, we want to first not look at the gurus we know or we think we know or we think we've seen. We just want to take the idea and we see the idea is a teacher who self-reflectively um, shows you who you are as you remember yourself to be all that is in a sense. So in other words, gurus and existential teachers are in, are in a sense glows of existential allowance for consciousness to dissolve into its form. <coughs> what that means is that we see that there have been many teachers in the we see that there have been many different methods and many people even think that teachers are just physical. When you confront the more abstract areas of your thought, you see that your basis of certainty is based on realities which you have kept firm. But as you explore different areas of your mind, in other words, you're acknowledging more than just one more modality of thought by simply stopping any modality and simply seeing what's there. Once you see that creative in inspiration of it, in a sense, you, you kind of stop. And you see that the relationship you had with life before has shifted a bit because you've had an internal experience that has given you a new sense of being alive that is, in a sense, more limitless than the limited way of living you have. What that means is we are a changing process and in this process of change we alter in the sense that our state communicates differently when our thoughts are different. Existential teachers are a very great placement and we want to first look at the human idea as a self-communication in which it is both the chess board, the chess pieces, and also the chess. Player. Now, regardless of how the pawns behave, they are being moved. We see the hand of life and existence pushing us and now we have evolved into what we are. However, evolution is showing us that we have uncertainty in our past, and we also have uncertainty in our future. Our only certainty seems to be right now. And mainly because there is uncertainty in the future, you will feel that there are some things you don't know. So you will go into these ways of confronting the lack of things you know, and it's fine. Because it is simply an allowance for you to stop identifying with a programmed and conditioned you. Your sense of self changes the moment you see that self can be formless in a sense. And so many gurus have to walk by to awaken different flows of attention into other flows of attention. And we right now in this reality are basing how other realities are based on what we see now. Our words have come from somewhere and that place is really in the past. Because there is something about conception which is similar to how when the cake is out of the oven, you can't touch it. 
And so you see that there are certain ways in which we engage with ourselves which we cannot touch ourselves. In other words, rationality will shift the minute you recognize you're not just in one room. You're in many simultaneous experiences of space and time on a subtle level of your own attention to self. Gurus have been said to step down. But you will see that the reason they step down into physical form is not to show you that there is a superman you can be or to say that they are a gift even though they are. The guru is a symbol of the ladder that is made without steps the guru's job is to show you to yourself and the minute he does that you're gone you will see that great gurus have been teachers not by their way of thought they were not always thinking what to teach but in a sense the lesson was so present naturally that they were simply an emanation of it There's a story that there was once a, a very, very wise man, but a man who thought he could be enlightened, but somehow knew that he wasn't there. And so the story I'm going to tell you is that there's this very wise man who many people gather around him to become his disciples and learn from him. And one of his disciples asks him, as if he's asking an enlightened master, question about life and death. And when I say enlightened master, guys, this is not, like I'm not talking about a chef, you know, it's not, it's not like that. I'm talking about a being who has observed reality to a degree that his eyes have met the creators. <clears throat> continue this wise sage is asked a question and the minute this disciple asks asks this question a certain sense of nervousness nervousness comes in him and a sweat comes on his forehead and the minute this wise man even though not enlightened recognizes this he realizes there's something missing and so he tells all the disciples to leave and says I'm no longer your master your teacher and he leaves but comes back two years with a different glow you are constantly being introduced to new ways new individual ways of being collective of being not seeing of being your collective you will see that the moment has an intelligence that will communicate to you what, what it is that you need to do and you may doubt yourself on many different levels of your own perception but your perception right now is very based on comparison and so you see the wise man realizes that wisdom is natural and so this natural communication is innately within everyone so once you see that you're completely sustained <coughs> by your sense of origin which is now you do not hold on to things but in a sense let go of them to see the many ways you can be in the various realities that are known to conception or hide behind its will. 
When we talk about these things, I'm being poetic because I want to show you to yourself in a way that I'm tearing up reality to make it clear. Reality is chaotic when an ordered man, or a very orderly man, begins to look at himself differently. Our energies are whirling into manifestation through many self-reflective and holographic projections. What that means is you think you're in one reality, but you're simply that caterpillar on the first branch and so you see that the minute you transmute and the minute your awareness to self shifts into a totality that cannot be named the ring the stone on the ring on your finger will feel as heavy as the mountain because in that moment of conception it is your teacher your guru is one that your moment introduces it to you. Your first guru is your moment of being. It is that which is within you. Your second guru is all physicality. Your third guru becomes a very spe specific form of physicality in regards to a communication that is inducing more reality in you. People know how to be people because they are around people, which in a sense is individuals realizing how they are together always. Because when we are all on the same planet, we really need to see that we are the only ones here. If we see some part of the earth has evolved into a very capable being, we do not reduce that being's ability by making it ignorant of life and its all and all its forms. What that means is that if you have hate, if you are ignorant in to see suffering in a world that doesn't need names. You are the creator of every flawed creation. Man's mind is the intermediary between states of being that originate from a, a structured organization in which we, we dissolve into the next polar, polar, um, polarity which is an unstructured disorganization and after this you see that the self-awareness that is constantly putting meaning into meanings into meanings into being able to look at what is there is confusing a complex process of thought with what is really there to be as. You will see that once you acknowledge the self, the reason your consciousness shifts is because your attention to your space has changed in a way where you are no longer you. And so the grace of the guru begins with an emanation that sparks this in you. The guru is the candle already lit, but also the candle that knows that it is not the one who has lit it. So that is why it talks comfortably. That is why sometimes words can... <coughs> Walking worlds where men are not entrapped. You will, you will see that poetry is freedom in seeing that there is no reflection in your reflection. That there is nothing but the absolute sense of being here. And so if you are here, you are an introduction to this 
sector of existence, the sector of the cosmos. You see, we can see that our sciences and our technologies and the many designs that come to our aerospace engineers, that we are exploring greater scales. So man is looking at the cosmos as a speck of dust floating in a beam of light. And as you look at this conception of human idea, you will see the beauty in the natural design of what is external to you. Many people go through these internal processes through altered states and meditative states, or in, in a sense, deep moments of self-awareness, where they recognize that the reason they are free is because freedom could not, the freedom that was really free could not be named, could not be chained to a word. So the essence of the word freedom could never be shown to you in the word freedom. All you would see is free and then dumb, as in a sense of domination because there is something there to dominate which in a sense comes from free you will see your polarities will pull you around and you will run a few laps to recognize that you're not even a runner your consciousness shifts and so at times you become an experience of the moment that is receiving itself consciously but still unconscious to an aspect of itself its greater sense of presence so we see the human idea your personality can't just get rid of itself you can't just say oh I have an ego so I'm not gonna have an ego you know you are you you've been using your name you've been having your shape your face who you are be comfortable with this don't create stories saying that oh I'm not this because I've seen it. and even if you have that's fine you don't need to talk about that that belongs to you what you are is a flow of where attention has given existence a shape The fabric of this attention is not weaved in ways where man's eyes can see it. But as man becomes his world, he is no longer troubled by his own complexities that have created a cosmos too big to see clearly. Your biggest failures originate when you forget who is here and who is here is alive in manners in which a blind man can explain because he had once seen where mortal lives end. Your story rewinds back into itself. Your understanding of everything you have done gets pulled back into yourself and as it does, you're confronting all potentialities that could have existed with your touch. And so in a sense, as you are lifted into a knowing that has a more clear understanding, you see you have been observing yourself your whole life. Many people, what they call their guides, are in a sense an existential intelligence reintroducing itself to aspects of itself it has been developing to keep itself still. There are greater aspects to the human being that are not limited to any ideas or shapes such as the human idea or the human form, 
but are present in ways where your intelligence finds its potential. So at times, <clears throat> similar to how we find perhaps animals living in a sense of interdependence, we are not inter dependent or we we're, we're not depend we don't depend on others for walk but without them there will be no push into the unknown you will begin to see the beauty that is every limitation you have created you will begin to laugh at yourself because you will see that your ideas once you have this existential sense of peace have become as hollow as the first day where you picked them up and colored in the spots you are not lost but forgotten that you are found and so not to get too far off topic here but Gurus are beacons because their glow is an emanation, it is information. Once you are present aside another human being, you will see that if the intensity of your experience is shifting, if you are very self-aware, you will immediately know where it's from. You will see that your communication has been instant and that is why you have known each other for eternity. Because when two beings from temporal reality communicate instantly they belong to the same moment of conception or conception of both external temporal projections you see right now we're playing the internal external game as all this dissolves into a moment of focus the design showers itself with itself constantly you will see designs flowing with designs flowing with designs these are not designs you're following these are not designs you can compare they're simple projections and they only come across to you as feelings so if you suddenly see yourself going through intense feelings it is because there are certain uh, transmissions or transitions or certain things you are allowing yourself to remember and when I say allow it's in a sense that right now we still have a sense of other as separate but it is the same you will see humanity perhaps in some time will begin to acknowledge other differently it cannot but dissolve into itself there is no problem for humanity because in the coming years it will have already dissolved there were there are this this reality our realities are weaved with much greater fingers you will you will you will see you will see how your longing was both a push from your lowest into your highest sense of self and nothing you have no problems but you need action the action you need if you are intuitive and if you've got an intuitive communication is actually to just be present be present the communication that needs will find you then to be in the present moment is very simple in other words if there is a voice
You are the silence that follows. The next time you're around life, you will see that you have many senses of beauty and these attract you because they show you to senses of yourself and to moments where you're more open into receiving other ideas of self. The human mind is finding itself confused in regards to what is real or not. When this occurs, we are forgetting that where we find the present to be or anything that we conceive, it is not present physically if it holds a formless shape. And what is for a formless shape? shape that's constantly changing and so the guru will see this in you and he will break all rulers to show you that the beacon of truth was always in your eyes you are your greatest guru and every other guru that them. has something to say as much as your eyes do.